In this episode, I'm going to tell you more about sources in OBS and how we can layer them on top of each other and stack them up. We're going to talk about webcams as well and how to crop a webcam image. First of all, I'm going to go out of studio mode so I can see I've got two monitors here. I'll simplify that by just clicking on studio mode to go back to single mode here. And this is my static image that I've got here. Let me go and add a webcam scene now so that I can go and show my face full screen if I wanted to do that. So once again, we add the little plus icon here and I'll call my scene webcam. That will transition to the black scene with no sources and of course we don't have any sources. So I'll click the plus sign in the sources and I'm going to add a video capture device. So some sources come up as different things. There's a display capture, there's a game capture, and for anything that goes into your computer, like game capture cards or webcams, anything that's attached like that would come up as a video capture device. I'll do that. It'll, I can either leave it at video capture device or I'll call it just webcam. There we go. I'll click OK. And that that name is already in use. Now that's that's a shame. So I'll go and call it webcam two. How about that? There, webcam two. That should work. I think on one of my other sources I've used it. And hey, now you can see me. How you doing? Good to see you. So there's a few options down here. First, we can look at the device. So Logitech webcam C930E. That's one of mine. I can also use another webcam that's attached. So uh, that's now looking at my what is that? My chair. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's that's my webcam. I could also look inside that. Hello. That also works. I'll just leave that here. It's obviously not showing anything exciting other than my game controller right now. Some creatives use two webcams that you can set up independently and you can then show your face on one and what you're doing on the other. So that makes more sense. Some gamers show their hands on the controller or their hands on the keyboard, that sort of thing. I'm gonna show you my face. I think that's kind of cool. Let's do that. Hey, hey, very cool. Notice that my webcam comes up in four by three, even though it's a 16 by nine webcam. So, hmm, how am I gonna fix that? Well, that works with many of these options at the bottom here. If you scroll down, you can see that the resolution FPS type is set to device default. That's just what the webcam gives up by default. But if you click on that, you can change this to custom and then you can have a whole host of other resolutions that your camera can provide. You can go as high as you want or you can go as low as you want, but the size of the image that comes out of the webcam determines the aspect ratio. So if we go with 1920 by 1080, for example, then I will see that my image is 16 by 9 now. Whereas when I go with the default options, it was 4 by 3. Let me capture the whole 16 by 9 image. And, you know, there's some other options here. I've explained that in another video. I'll just leave everything as the default for now. Click OK. And now we have a webcam. And now you can see that I can transition between a static image and a moving scene. And I can also show you the webcam. That's exciting. So I can also overlay the webcam as an inset in the bottom right of something else. For example, my moving scene. That's just an example. You could also capture your desktop or you can capture a video game or whatnot. I'm going to talk about that later. Right now, I'm just going to show you how to add the webcam on top of this. There's in fact two ways of doing it. I'll show you the more straightforward way before we make things too complicated. So in the moving image scene that you want to add another source onto, click the plus sign. And in our case, we want to add the webcam. So we'll use the video capture device again. I don't have to create a new one because we already have an existing source, which is my webcam too. So click add existing, then click the source. So you have to do that. Otherwise, the OK button is going to be grayed out and hit OK. And as soon as I do that, I now have the webcam on top of the media source. So now we don't see the background anymore. But that's OK because the webcam fills the whole screen currently. Notice the red outline here that has these little handles on the side. I can go and grab one and go and just make that as small as I would like for example, like this. So now you have an inset of your webcam on top of a moving image. That's a good start. Notice that we don't have any audio level, so we're going to have to address that in a later video. But that's the principle. 
These sources, if I had more than two sources, they work like that the source that's shown at the top of the list is the one that's shown on top of the stack. If you're familiar with Photoshop layers, that's exactly how that works. I can move these around by using these little arrows at the bottom. So if I select the webcam here and then move that behind my moving media source now, I don't see the webcam anymore. Makes sense because the media source is overlaid on top of my webcam. So I can reverse that, uh, just sort the layers top or bottom as you see fit. There's more than two sources that we can add to this. So maybe, for example, I want something else on top of that moving image, for example, an overlay, like a text overlay. Let's add something else, like another image, for example. I'll call this one text overlay. I click OK. And now I'll go and select another image like this one here. This is a PNG image that has transparency. So I've already typed some text out here in Photoshop like this. And you can see that the preview is gray. So that's the transparency. But if we move this window to the side, you can see that the text now shows on top of my moving media source. Great. Let's click OK. And there we go. Now, perhaps I don't want my text to be quite as big and uh, encroaching onto my webcam so I can go and resize the text as well just like that any source can be resized like that while we're talking about resizing you can also do this by right clicking on the source that you'd like to resize and then hit transform this will give you a whole other host of options like rotating and flipping and all that uh, as well as copying transform options from other sources. So if you've set something up at a 75.3% crop, then you can copy the transform from another source and apply that again to this source. Very handy. You can also reset a transform. So if I had done something like that, and I'm thinking, oh, I've grabbed the wrong source there, which was the media source rather than the text, you can just right click on that, head over to transform and it reset transform. That'll do that. It's kind of a nice thing that that happened here. I meant to resize my text, but accidentally I've grabbed a different source. We can click that little lock icon here to lock something in that we do not want to grab anymore. So right now my media source is selected. And as soon as I touch a handle here, it'll, it'll do that. It'll move this as well. It doesn't just resize it. You can move the whole thing. So if I don't want to do that, let me go and reset that transform. I can click the lock icon and now the media source cannot be moved anymore. Um, instead, the next source at the top of the pile will be selected instead. Keep that in mind. Two more things before we wrap this up, and that is a little bit of color correction and how to type out text with a built-in typing tool. So let's do color correction first. That happens with something called a filter. They're a little bit akin to blending options in Photoshop, and they let us adjust opacity and contrast and all that of any of the sources that we've picked. So right now, perhaps my text isn't very readable because the background is a little bit too bright. Let me make it darker by selecting it media source, right clicking on this, and then we're hitting filters. And we're using an effect filter. So in the bottom box here, click the plus icon and apply a little bit of color correction. And you can use literally anything. You can give it a name if that's a particular type of filter that you're applying here. And we can either increase the contrast, decrease it, make it inverse if we like, very, very snazzy. We can mess with the gamma, or we can just simply adjust the opacity down here. Now, opacity works quite well in this case because if we drop it down, you can see the preview of what's happening here. So it gets just less intense. But the result of it on the background is that it gets darker. And the reason for that is that behind the media source, there's nothing. So there's blackness. So by dropping the opacity down, it will shine through whatever's behind it more. And in our case, it's black. Hence, it just gets darker. So knocking down opacity here works quite well. I might just drop that down to maybe, I don't know, maybe 40%. And then I hit close. The same goes for a text layer. So the image layer that I have here, the text overlay, I could apply another one of those and just knock down the opacity a little bit so that the text blends in a little bit more with the background. So once again, hit the little plus icon, add color correction, knock it down to maybe 80, five, between 80 and 90, personal preference really. But once we do that, it just appears a little bit more 
blend it with the background. I'm also going to knock this down a little bit in regards to size so it doesn't encroach on my vision here. Now this is one way of typing text but I had to use Photoshop to do that. If you don't have Photoshop or you don't have access to anything that has typing options you can use the built-in typing tool. Let me show you how that works. It's another source. Click the plus icon on the source and pick the text tool. You can leave the name or you can type out what you intend to write here. I'm just going to leave this and you can type any text you like. So like hello world. You can also change the font and the size in this field. So let's perhaps use Comic Sans because no one likes it, even though it's a nice font. Let's hit bold and make it a bit larger, like, you know, 72. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And here it is. That's the built-in typing tool in comparison. You can make that bigger as well. And you can see it doesn't have many fancy options, so I don't see a drop shadow or anything on it. But it does work if you just want to throw up some quick text and you don't want to go into an image manipulation program. You can use that. And once again, you can apply filters as you see fit. And that about wraps it up for this episode. In the next one, I will show you how to capture your desktop or a specific application. And also how we get some audio into our stream. Join me for that.